the matter? What is it? It's another case for Nick Carter, Master Detective! Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss varnish, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of fine Acme quality paints. Today's curious adventure, Murder by Fire. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Midnight Alarm. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick solved the mystery of who killed Jenny Baker and why, and what was behind the fire that destroyed Oscar Warren's button factory at midnight. But first, let me tell you something. Millions have learned from experience that Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, brings amazing new beauty to walls. Now, millions more are finding that the three great Linux home brighteners brings amazing new beauty to floors, woodwork, and furniture. Linux self-polishing wax, which beautifies your floors with a satiny yet tough non-skid finish that resists wear, water, and dirt. Linux cream polish, which cleans as it polishes, leaving no oily film on your furniture. And Linux clear gloss varnish, the durable super varnish that dries to an elastic transparent surface which protects all wood and linoleum in your home. You'll find the three great Linux home brighteners at your hardware, paint, or department store. Your headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As we start today's story, Nick and Patsy are watching a big factory fire in the downtown district. Suddenly, Nick calls to the battalion chief. Chief, there's a woman trapped up there on the top floor. You're crazy, Carter. The boys reported all clear several minutes ago. I don't care what they reported. There's a girl up there. I just heard her scream. I'm going up and get her. You're a fool to go in there. But if you do, be sure to get that gas mask of yours on tight, or you won't come out again. These button factory fires are full of poison gas from the celluloid and peroxide. Makes no difference. I've got to find out about that girl, Chief. So long. Hey, Bill! Yeah! Get one of those two-inch nozzles over here. Rush it up the big ladder, up to the top floor. Cover Carter while he's inside there. Okay. He's a fool, but he's a brave man. Can you see him yet, Chief? No, he's been gone long enough to be out of there twice already. Well, there he is, Chief. Chief, over there. Yeah, he's got somebody with him. Ambulance, over here. Get the first aid kit in a hurry. Nick, Nick, are you all right? Yes, Patrick, I'm all right. Here, here, let me get your gas mask off. There, stay Thanks, Patsy, I'm okay. Nick, Nick, the ambulance is coming. It's no use, Chief. She died in my arms on the way down. Oh, Nick. The poor kid. Yes, Chief, it's not only first-degree arson, it's first-degree murder as well. Murder? Yes, Patsy, just as sure as I'm standing here. What's going on here? Who, who is that you got there, Nick? I don't know, Riley. Just found her on the top floor of the building. Huh? Tied up and burning to death. You mean somebody deliberately left her there to burn to death? I do. She was bound and gagged and shot up in a closet. Oh, but, oh. Nick, why didn't somebody hear her before she got burned so badly? Look here, Patsy. See these ugly red burns on each side of the dead girl's mouth? Yes, what are they? She was gagged. That's why she didn't cry out sooner. She couldn't. Not until the gag burned away. Oh, Nick, she must have suffered agony up there. Hurt. Somebody hurt? Yeah, somebody's hurt. Who are you? I'm Oscar Warren. This this factory was mine. Oh, so it was yours, was yes. it? Yes. Did you ever see this girl here before? Huh? Let me see. Oh, yes. That's Jenny. Jenny Baker. And who is Jenny Baker? Our bookkeeper. What what happened to her? The same thing has happened to your building, Mr. Warren. Burned to death? Right. But I don't understand. What was she doing here at this time of night? We weren't working overtime or taking inventory or anything. Why was she here? That's only one of the things we don't know, Mr. Warren. Mr. Warren, how did you happen to know there was a fire here? I didn't know. And what are you doing here? I've been at the movies. 
On my way home, I stopped to pick up a bundle I left at my office this afternoon. And where's your home? Up in Washington Heights. And where did you go to the movies tonight? In Union Square. So you come all the way from your home in Washington Heights to go to see a movie in Union Square. Uh, Yes, but I... And on the way home, you stop at your office, which is a couple of miles out of your way, to pick up a bundle. It's a fine story. Look, if I left the bundle in my office, where else could I go to pick it up? Did you start this fire here tonight? Why should I start a fire in my own factory? Answer yes or no. Did you start this fire and why? No, I didn't. Why should I? Same reason any other firebug has. To make money out of the insurance company. But I tell you... Your firm been making money this year? No. Business isn't so good this year. Yeah, but now that you can get your insurance money, everything's okay, I suppose. Look, why should you accuse me of things like that? Listen, Warren. A factory has been burned down. And a girl has been killed. And someone is responsible. And we're going to find out who. Hi, Nick. Sorry I'm late, Riley. I hoped to get here before you started questioning, Warren, but I couldn't make it. What have you found out? It's been like pulling teeth, Nick. But he's told us that the dead girl, Jenny Baker, was office manager and bookkeeper for his firm for the past seven years. Knew more about customers and accounts than he did. Invaluable, he said. The only thing wrong with her was that she's been going out recently with his partner, Alfred Hoffman. So what if she did go out with this Herman? There, it's a crook! And no... Easy now, Mr. Warren. None of that. Now, you see, Nick, Warren and Herman just didn't get along so good. Couldn't agree on how the business was to be run. Mr. Carter, a couple of months ago, a lot of funny business started. Some shipments were made that hadn't been ordered. Then money was borrowed on the shipments. Other things, too. Yeah, they had arguments, too. Lots of them, Nick. About a week ago, they finally had a fist fight. Yeah, and I licked him, too, the crook. Then we called the partnership off. Which one of you is getting out of the partnership? I'm buying him out. Uh, well, as soon as I get the money together. Yeah, with the money you're hoping to collect from the insurance company, you mean? This is a serious accusation, Lieutenant Riley. Very serious. Why, my client's reputation would be ruined if these charges of yours were made public. Stop sounding off that way, Hamilton. You're not in court and your client's not in jail yet. Strikes me, Hamilton, that if you were to tell your client what a jam he's in and advise him to tell us what we want to know, he'd be a lot better off. That fire was incendiary, no mistake about that. And his bookkeeper died in it. Yeah, and his alibi ain't even good for a laugh. Absurd, ridiculous. Mr. Warren's spotless reputation over a long ah, period of years. Forget your speech for a minute, Hamilton. See if it can help your client explain a couple of points here. See here, Lieutenant. I don't need any instruction from you as to my duties as a lawyer. Mm. Though perhaps I could instruct you in your duties as a public official. Why, what do you mean by that crack? It's plain enough who set the factory on fire if it was set. Oh, and who do you think did it? Alfred Herman. He threatened to do it a week ago and threatened to kill my client too if he got the chance. Huh? You say he threatened that a week ago? Yeah. Mr. Hamilton's telling the truth, Mr. Carter. Herman said I'd live only just long enough to be sorry I'd kicked him out of the firm. Which I didn't do, really. We, well, we agreed I should buy him out. But you say you haven't paid him yet? No, I haven't had the money yet. Well, will you get enough out of this insurance company, if you get anything at all, to pay off all your creditors, including Herman? All the creditors, maybe, but nothing left for Herman. Then it hardly seems logical that he'd spoil his chances of getting money from you by putting you out of business. Yeah, why would he want to do that, Mr. Wise Guy? Have you ever heard of revenge? Many men will pay more for revenge than for anything else. Riley, I think I'll have a talk with this Alfred Herman. Where does he live, Warren? 1335 West End Boulevard. What does he look like? Uh, slender, blonde, young-looking, clean-shaven. You know, a ladies' man. All right, I'll find him. See you later, Riley. didn't you, Nick? Yes, this is it. What do you want to get out of Herman, Nick? First, I want to see if he has an alibi. Ring again, Betsy. Okay. Well, guess he's not in. No, oh, I'm afraid you're... Huh. Well, what is it? I smell gas. Gas? And it's leaking around the door to Herman's apartment. You think there's something wrong? I'm going to find out. Where's my pick lock? Oh, here it is. This is easy. Oh, good. There. Yes, there is gas in here. Stay outside, Patsy, while I take a look in the kitchen. All right, Nick, but be careful. I'll be all right. Yes, it's coming out of the kitchen here, all right. Whew. Have to get the window open first. There. That'll let some fresh air in here. Now, well, trying to kill yourself, are you? Well, not this time, my friend. Come on over to the window. 
There. I got you just in time, didn't I? Well, you'll be all right. You okay, Nick? Yes, Patsy. But don't come in until the gas clears out some. All right. Is it Alfred Herman you found? Looks like him from the description I got. He's coming around now. Oh. All right, breathe deep. Get some fresh air into your lungs in place of all that gas. Oh, why didn't you let me finish it? Stop being sorry for yourself. Breathe deep. Oh, why should I want to live? Money stolen, business taken away. Now my girl is dead. You know how she died? What agony she went through? Yes. I saw her when he took her away. How'd you happen to be there? I went to the plant to meet her. She asked me to. What was she doing there so late? Checking over the books to find out how much old Oscar Warren had stolen from me these past months. That's all she was staying with the old crook for. As soon as she got the goods on him, she was going to leave. And we were going to get married. You like to prove that to a jury? I don't care what happens now. Jenny's dead. True. But would you like to be convicted of her murder? Murder? You mean the fire was set? It was. I mean, let me help you up. Yes, it was set by someone who knew enough about the button business to gather up all the shavings of celluloid and put them where they'd start burning the best. When was it set? Around 9.30 to 10 o'clock, as near as we can figure. You have an alibi for that time? Well, yes, I... I spent the whole evening with Dottie Baker, Jenny's sister. Where? At their apartment on Royal Avenue. You fond of Dottie? Yes, I am. Maybe you'd rather marry Dottie than her sister. Why, you... If you weren't a cop, I'd kill you for saying I'm that. not a cop. I'm a private detective. Now, this You've coming... got no right to say that. Jenny's the only girl in the world for me. You sure? Am I sure? Here, look at this. What is it? Here, in my hand. Why, I... Oh, my eyes! Here's something else for you! Oh. Nick, what are you doing? Here's one for you, too. Ah! Nick fell for the oldest trick in the world of crooks. Red pepper hurriedly snatched from the kitchen table and thrown in his eyes when he was off guard, then slugged and knocked out. And Patsy knocked unconscious in the apartment hall as Alfred Herman makes his getaway to parts unknown. Where does all this leave Nick? We'll see in just a moment. If your youngsters have ever tracked in slush, mud, or snow when you just finished cleaning the floor, you know how exasperating it is. But it can be a lot less trouble when your floors are protected by Linex self-polishing wax. For Linex self-polishing wax resists water so that it's removed in a jiffy. Linex self-polishing wax resists dirt too, keeping it on the surface so that it's easily cleaned away. And although Linex self-polishing wax is simply wiped on without tiresome rubbing or polishing, it resists wear as well. What's more, when worn spots appear, it may be renewed at any time without re-waxing the whole floor. Yes, Linex self-polishing wax is a splendid finish for any floor, wood, tile, or linoleum, giving a beautiful satiny appearance. And it's the non-skid finish. The underwriters' laboratories have proved that fact. Get Linex, L-I-N-X, Linex self-polishing wax now. You'll find all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And now, back to our story. We left both Nick and Patsy unconscious in the apartment of Alfred Herman, partner in the button factory in which Jenny Baker was burned to death. Herman has vanished. As we pick them up, they're on their way downtown in Nick's car. It's early evening. Feeling better now, Patsy? Yes, thanks, Nick. That cup of coffee made a new woman out of me. I feel more normal myself than I did a while back. What a sap that Herman made out of me. You ain't kidding. Where do you suppose he is now? Somewhere miles away from here, no doubt. Your trip to his place didn't accomplish much, did it? No. Except for saving his life, it accomplished absolutely nothing. That's right. I went through everything in the apartment. Found nothing that interested me in the least. Not a clue in a carload. Net result of the trip. One bump on the head for you where he hit you with the iron skillet. One sore jaw for me where he punched me. Ow. Well, I hope I have better luck where I'm going now. Where is that? I want to have another look at the burnt factory now that the fire's died down enough so I can get in the place. Oh, is it safe? 
framework of the building is still standing. Only the contents were burned. Not all of them. Well, There's a hot fire and a short one. That's it, just ahead there, isn't it? Yes. Now, Patsy, I'm going in. But I want you to wait in the car. Oh, but... I have a hunch something's wrong in there. I want you out here so I can have a friend on the outside. Now, wait here for an hour. If I don't come out by then, call Riley. You mean you think there's still someone in there? I don't know what I think, Patsy. I'm just playing a hunch coming down here at all. And my hunch says be careful. You stay here and watch. All right, Nick, but do take care of yourself. Don't worry, Patsy. I like me well enough to do that very vigorously. Be seeing you. Still warm. Whoever started this fire did a very careful job. Contents of the stock room burned completely. The office not hit so hard. Except for the, the office file. Huh. Strange. If the safe door should be standing open that way. This must have been Oscar Warren's desk. Hmm. I hardly touched this corner. That's odd. Bells off the telephone box. Hmm. It was taken off so it wouldn't ring. Aha, I see. Well, I guess I'll just take this bell box with me. Take out these two screws, and I can... They're a poor shot. Try these. Huh. It took a couple of shots at me and ran. It wasn't so dark in here, I might stand a better chance of seeing which way. Is that a shadow or... Anybody there? Get your hands up and keep them up. And keep coming toward me. All right, I'm coming. Got a flashlight? Yes. Turn it on yourself. I want to get a good look at you. All right. Here. Why, you're... You're Dottie Baker, aren't you? Yes, I'm Dottie Baker. You look just like your sister. You tried to kill me just now? I didn't try to kill anybody. You have a gun? No. I wouldn't even know how to fire one. Did you hear the shooting? Yes, that's what scared me so. What are you doing up here? I, I, I came to look for evidence that my sister was murdered. And what makes you think Jenny was murdered? She was afraid someone was going to kill her. She wouldn't tell me who, but she knew someone had been juggling the stockroom inventories and the shipping records. That's why she was here last night, trying to find out what was going on. But she was afraid something would happen to her before she got the proof. And it did. But I've got the proof. What? Look here. See these metal bands? Yes. They were on the cartons of merchandise that were burned. And they proved that there were only a few of them in the stock room when the fire started. It's the oldest trick in the business. Remove most of your stock, then have a fire, and claim it burned up all your stock. But where are the cartons of stuff that they took out of here? If you could only find them, they'd prove who did it, wouldn't they? They certainly would, Daddy. And I think I know where to find them. But how could you know that? The bell box where the telephone on Mr. Warren's desk told me. Come on. Where? I'm going to take you home first. And I'm going hunting for those missing cases. Because the man who juggled the books and removed the cases was the man who killed your sister and set the fire. Oh, I hope you're right, Mr. Carter, Nick Carter. The detective? That's right. Oh, now I know you'll find the murderer. Well, I hope you're right. Oh, by the way, you seen Alfred Herman lately? Oh, yes, he spent last evening at our apartment waiting for Jenny to get through at the factory. Why? Oh, curiosity, Daddy. Just curiosity. One of a detective's most important weapons. All right, come on. Let's get you home. Now, listen carefully, Betsy. Judging from the light on the second floor there, although Mr. Oscar Warren should be in bed, he's still up. Which makes it more dangerous for you. Yes. But I'm going to have a look in his basement just the same. I'm sure I'll find the missing cartons there. And if I do, the case is over. So I'm going to let myself in while you keep a look out here. I can't tell you what to look for, so just keep your eyes open. Okay. Now listen, Patsy, we're up against something very dangerous in this case. So take care of yourself while I'm gone. Ah, I thought so. Must be nearly a hundred cases piled up against the back wall of this basement. Which will send Mr. Oscar Warren... Stop that gun! Get your hands up. Turn around, face the wall. It'll be hard to make my death look like an accident right here in your own house, Mr. Warren. <laughs> They'll get you if you try it. Why, it's Mr. Carter. I thought you were a burglar. What are you doing here in my house without permission? Looking over your stock of buttons. 
You have a permit to store this inflammable stuff here? Look, Mr. Carter, I told you Herman was pulling some funny business. These boxes are each supposed to contain two $300 worth buttons. Look, I cut one of these cases open. You see? They're full of junk, rubbish. Herman steals the buttons, fills the boxes with this stuff. Then he ships them, and we got to make good. 25000 we lost already. Why didn't you have him arrested? I couldn't catch him doing it. It's no go, Mr. Warren. Alfred Herman has an airtight alibi. Have you? I was at the movies. All right, Mr. Warren, you and I... Ah! Oh, fire! There's fire all over the place. Yes, there must have been a firebomb. Out this way. The outside door is unlocked where I came in. This way. I, I can't see. The smoke! Here, I'll get you out. Come out. <laughs> Uh, I thought I was a goner, Mr. Carter. Well, if you hadn't been for Nick, uh, you would have been. Are you all right, Nick? I think so. Lost a little hair, but that's all. Uh, uh, Nick, there's still someone in there caught in the fire. Warren, I thought you said the house was empty. It was. I can't understand. I'll see who it is. Oh, but, Nick, this house won't be standing more than a few minutes longer. Uh, You'll be caught. I'll make it. I got you. Uh, I admit you saved my life, Mr. Carter. I'm very grateful. What's the idea of insisting that I go down to police headquarters with you? Because that's where you belong, Hamilton. I know now that you're the one who bound and gagged Jenny Baker and then set fire to the factory. What? You're crazy. That's absurd. You. It could be. Of course. Yes. It was you, not Herman. You had a key. You could get at the stock in the books. And I owe you money, too. So it was you, my lawyer. He's no lawyer, Mr. Warren. I looked him up. He was disbarred some years ago. It was you, Dan Hamilton, who got me to bring these cases of scrap celluloid to my house. You said it would be evidence against Herman. But this is ridiculous. Why, at, at the time the police say the fire started, I was at headquarters reporting Herman's threats against Mr. Warren here. I'll bet you set off that firebomb in my basement to kill Mr. Carter and me. I'm quite sure he did. But he didn't realize how fast the fire would spread. And he almost got caught in it himself. Going through Mr. Warren's papers, weren't you, Hamilton? Well, this is all too fantastic, Carter. But if you insist on my going along with you, you, you won't mind if I call my office first, will you? Who would be at your office at 3.30 in the morning? Well, the cleaning woman. I could ask her to tell my secretary where you're taking me. So you want to call your office, do you? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go to your office instead. Oh, no, no, no. That won't be necessary. I'll call later. No, I think we'll go there now. That's it. Drive to Mr. Hamilton's office on Broad Avenue. And hurry. All right, Hamilton. Open the door. And no tricks. Very well. <gasps> Nick, look. Alfred Herman. Yes, Herman. And very dead. Bullet hole right through the heart. And a gun in his hand. Suicide. But why in my office? No, Hamilton. Not suicide, but murder. Murder number two for you. But you can see that he No can... right-handed man could shoot himself so straight in the heart. And there were no marks of powder in his hand, as there would be if he'd fired a gun. He must have known more about you than I thought he did for you to kill him. All right, Carter. Let's go down to headquarters. We're wasting time here. Now, not so fast, Hamilton. You're too anxious. I want to look at your telephone bell box. Don't move, Hamilton. I'll shoot if I do. Well, what about the bell box, Nick? Look here, uh, Bessie. Hmm? And you too, Warren. Hey, what's that arrangement, Carter? He takes the bell off, sticks a piece of emery paper on the clapper of the bell. Then he fastens a blue tip match where it'll be lighted by the emery paper on the clapper as it vibrates against the tip of the match when the bell rings. The match sets fire to this oil-soaked rag which leads to this wastebasket full of paper and excelsior. So when he phones his office, he sets fire to it. The body is burned up, together with all the papers and files that might incriminate him. Is that how he set fire to the factory? It is, Patsy. I have in my car the bell box from Warren's desk at the factory for proof. Hamilton probably called the factory from the police station, which would give him an ironclad alibi. Mr. Carter, so far you haven't found one bit of proof to connect me with this thing in any way. Now, come on, let's get out of here. Why the rush, Hamilton? Have I missed something? Well, then, let's take a good look around. Behind the desk. Under. Uh -huh. So that's it. Dottie Baker, under that big desk. Gagged and tied up so she can't move. Just the way he left Jenny in the factory. All right, Dottie, just a minute. Oh, he did it. The 
that Hamilton. I saw him kill Alfred. She's lying. She's trying I to find me. I saw him do it. I came in just as he shot him. So he tied me up and left me here. He was going to burn the whole building up when he could get where he'd have an alibi. He said so. I guess that does it, Hamilton. I should have killed you outright instead of waiting. You, you and your sister, both of you got in my way. Hamilton? It won't take you as long to die in the electric chair as it took Jenny Baker to die in that flaming factory you left her in. But you'll be just as dead in the end, which is as it should be. All right, come on. Let's get down and turn you over to Riley. I've had all I can stand of a skunk like you. just a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. But now, a tip on relaxing. Everybody enjoys relaxation. And you know yourself how much easier it is to relax in surroundings that are pleasant. Your home can be more pleasant every day in the year when you rely on the three great Linux home brighteners to keep it inviting. That's the way to keep your home sparkling with cleanliness and beauty. Your fine furniture, for example, always looks its gleaming best when you use Linex Cream Polish, the furniture aid that gives a handsome luster in half the time. You see, Linex Cream Polish removes the cloudy accumulation of dust and previous polish in one quick application, actually cleans as it polishes, giving your furniture new beauty and saving you one whole step in your cleaning day routine. Linex Cream Polish does away with messy fingerprints and helps conceal ugly scratches, too. And no oily film remains on your furniture to attract additional dust to make additional work. So be sure to ask your dealer for Linex Cream Polish for fine furniture. You'll find all three great Linex home brighteners, Linex self-polishing wax, Linex cream polish, and Linex clear gloss varnish at your nearest hardware, paint, or department store. Remember to ask for them by name, Linex. It's spelled L-I-N-X, Linex. Ask for it now. Now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. Well, Nick, what do you think next week's story will be exciting? I know it'll be exciting, Cal. It's a simple little story to start with, but it gets into a mad tangle of murder before we're through with it. Usually it's Nick who gets himself in danger of his life. But this time it was yours truly who got in the way of the killer and nearly added to the total score. An old lady, rich and eccentric, was dying without leaving a will. And there were six claimants for the three million she was leaving. Some of them extremely money hungry. Mm, and extremely ruthless, too. Well, what do you call it, Nick? Death by ricochet. Or oh, the mystery of the abandoned gravel pit. For full details of an exciting few hours, join us next week. So long. So long, everybody. And so long to both of you. See you next week at the same time. Next week at this same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled Death by Ricochet. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Abandoned Gravel Pit. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is featured in Street and Smith magazine. Lon Clark is starred as Nick with Helen Choate as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White and the programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the three great Linex home brighteners. Linex clear gloss varnish, Linex cream polish, and Linex self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme fine quality paint. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linex dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is Mutual. <laughs>